podcast f let's go ahead and move over to deep shots of the week no we're not going to have any 0.1 percent rostered guys this week like we did with olamide zacchaeus last week but i i've seen the seen the doc we got going and there's some pretty good names on this list so i'll go ahead and start it off with my first deep shot it's a running back it's devonta freeman and this was a hot waiver wire pickup a couple weeks ago and the consensus was you have to wait for him to get ramped up in this offense. You can't start him right away. So maybe someone tried to start him and got disappointed, cut him again. Um, and he could be a very good plug and play option this week against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Devontae Freeman last week snuck into RB2 um, range with his performance as the RB24 on the week, was getting some passing work in that game when they were trying to come back on the LA Rams. Last week, 11 carries on the ground, four receptions through the air. So pretty good usage for Devontae Freeman. Going up against this Dallas Cowboys team that can't stop anybody, if he can get 15 touches in this game, I think he could have a very nice performance. And the best thing to see last week, I mean, 54% of snaps. That's great. And considering Deion Lewis is there, Wayne Gallman, in his first game with the Giants, you know, four days after signing, three days after signing, only 28% of snaps. Last week that got worked up to 54%. Wouldn't even be surprised to see that. Somewhere from 60 to 75% this week. And if he's going to take that role in New York, no, he's not Saquon Barkley. Yes, their offensive line is terrible, but he'll be a starting running back. So if you have Devonta Freeman and you're in a pinch, don't mind throwing him in that RB2 spot or flexing him here in week five. Yeah, if you, if you need him, you can do a lot worse than Freeman. Let me talk about my first deep shot of the week. It's probably the only wide receiver one, the roster wide receiver one. Maybe this guy isn't even that. 2.4% rostered in ESPN leagues. Oh, my God. It's Zach Pascal against the 31st ranked. T.Y. Hilton, man. Cleveland. Dude, Hilton Hilton is, is hurting right now. I don't know what's going on with him because he is. Zach Pascal and T.Y. Hilton have had the same snap percentage they did last week. And Zach Pascal out-targeted Hilton the last two weeks. The matchup is great against Cleveland, mm. who's 31st against the wide receiver position. And Zach Pascal, we've seen him operate as a deep threat in this offense when T.Y. Hilton has gotten out. He kind of was, um, you know, when Andrew Luck was there, when Hilton was playing really well. It was like, oh, Hilton went out of the lineup. Let's grab Zach Pascal and plug him in there. Kind of like a Devonta Adams, Alan Lazard, or a Tyreek Hill, Miko Hardman type situation. He was just kind of this wide receiver handcuff. But now he's being asked to play a full-time role with Michael Pittman out of the lineup with Paris Campbell on IR. So I think you can do a lot worse than Zach Pascal. I know it's a really gross name, but if you're in some deep leagues, you need a spot start. Maybe it's a desperation wide receiver too, or a flex play. And some of these games end up getting canceled with some of the COVID uh, concerns here. I think you can can pick up Pascal and just plug him right in. I like that one, Steph. He's been really nice for my Colts. Was a deep shot a couple times last week, plugged him into my flex, and he's had some pretty good performances in his career in the right matchup. So I love that pick. I'll move over to my last deep shot, another wide receiver, Hunter Renfro against the Chiefs. And Renfro's roster percentage is climbing. He's up to 38% rostered, but still only 15% started. So, I mean, Renfro is still available in a lot of places. And in PPR leagues, I think he should at least be on your team. And he's in flex consideration. You look at his past two games with the Raiders having, you know, um, Tyrell Williams already out for the season. Then you have Henry Ruggs, who's missed time. He's not expected back. You've also got Brian Edwards, who's out right now. So Derek Carr is operating with Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro as his primary targets in this offense. And Renfro has been a major beneficiary of that. Last two weeks when he's had this opportunity, 65% and 70% of snaps, nine targets and eight targets in those games. And he's put together two really nice performances, a 20 fantasy point performance and then a 10.7 point performance last week. So if you're in a pinch and you need a high floor play, I think you can start Hunter Renfro in a game against the Chiefs where we know the Chiefs game scripts are always going to lead to their opponent having to throw the ball, having to put up points, taking chances. I think Hunter Renfro is a very safe play this week. If you need 10 to 12 PPR points, he's your guy. And I think if he scores a touchdown, he has some upside as well. Nice, nice. It feels like Renfro is always going to end up here in this deep shot segment at one point or another every season. He's Cole (laughs) Beasley, the new Cole Beasley. Now let's... Let's let's finish up here. I'll try to finish strong here with another deep shot. It's a running back, and it's the matchup. It's the usage. I might be hopping on this train a little bit too early, but it's Chase Edmonds. You've been on this train for a while. I have been. I was in. I was all in on this guy. Someone you could pick up that would have standalone value because I thought the offense was going to be moving. 
the offense is moving, uh, but that's not why Chase Edmonds has actually become a deep flex option or a deep shot that you can plug in this week. It's because that he's seeing all the receiving work and Kenyon Drake is not. And Kevin Kenyon Drake, for whatever reason, we've talked about it. it seems like every single episode now, he continues to be a guy who's underperforming. And sooner than later, I mean, the Arizona Cardinals only have Kenyon Drake on a transition tag. They don't really have much loyalty to him. I could easily see them trying to get Chase Edmonds worked up and see if they can keep a guy who's on another low cost contract is a guy that they can roll with next season. And Chase Edmonds is coming off a 15 fantasy point game in PPR leagues where he only played on 30% of snaps last week. And he's seeing all the passing work in this offense. He saw six targets last week is seen close to that number every single week. Um, and you can see him be a guy that can break away for a touchdown. We could easily see him get a touchdown in this matchup against New York. He scored on 50% of his games this season. So you got to love plugging in Chase Edmonds if you need a deep uh, running back or a really, really deep flex in this Jets matchup. Steph, I gave you so much crap for that Chase Edmonds when you said he had standalone value, barring an injury to Kenyon Drake before the season. And so far, I've kind of been eating my words on that one. He's been a good backup someone you know who's had a couple of solid performances where if you did flex him he actually returned value and chase edmonds i'm looking right now i mean you still haven't wanted to start this guy like let's be real yeah but if you've had to he's had a couple good weeks which is exactly what you said now he does have the great matchup edmonds is rb 36 right now in full ppr formats can you tell me who rb 35 is i Just cannot yes i cannot it it's Kenyon Drake. <laughs> so these guys are separated by 0. 0.2 points on the season. Wow. And Kenyon Drake has played significantly more snaps and gotten significantly more carries. If you would have told me these two guys were back-to-back -back through four weeks, I would have thought you were absolutely crazy. So let's see how this situation evolves. Maybe you're right, and Edmonds is going to start to take over a role in that backfield. Um, but I definitely like the pick this week in a great matchup. He's certainly their scat back, if nothing else. 